Hey everybody, today I wanted to talk a little bit about a, uh, a common gun control argument that gets brought up every year. You can't, you can't talk about an assault weapons ban without talking about this particular argument. It's, it's, it goes back as far as time. That argument is, would banning magazines over a certain capacity have any bearing on preventing or reducing the, uh, the carnage of mass shootings? And it always comes up, it never fails right after a mass shooting obviously the argument is it pertains specifically to mass shootings if we reduce the the number of rounds that the mass shooters could have in their firearms or in their magazines then we would one slow down the shooter that's that's one of our one of the arguments or two give people the chance to fight back like he stops to reload that gives them a chance to to fight back well by now, we've already seen an exhaustive number of videos. We've seen the video of Jerry Michalek completely firing all of the rounds in a revolver, unloading the revolver, reloading the revolver, revolver here, not semi-auto, not magazine, and then firing all of the rounds again, all in a span of less than eight seconds, and ad nauseum videos of people dumping their magazines in their AR-15s and reloading in one, two seconds, three seconds, maybe five for those people who are really, really bad at it. That's all fine. That's all good. That's all been covered. What I want to talk about today is some information on this specific subject that I have not seen anybody talk about anywhere else at all. And that is how many times in all of these recent high profile mass shootings that have been covered by all of the major news outlets across the country, how many times did those mass shooters reload during their crimes? Would a magazine ban have made any difference in those cases? So let's take a quick look and we'll go through just some of these. Uh, the ones that we're going to cover today are Columbine, obviously. That's, that's kind of the big one that starts everything. Virginia Tech, the Batman movie theater shooting, uh, Newtown, Parkland, and one that in a place that you might not expect, Russia, or specifically Crimea, which was annexed by Russia in, in, the, uh, in light of all of the gun control that they have over there. And then we'll talk a little bit about how many mass shootings have more than one shooter, or how many potential mass shootings could have more than one shooter based on some actual events. So let's jump into Columbine. The Columbine shooters carried with them four firearms. Two of them would not ever be covered by any assault weapons ban to date in the United States, in any individual state or at the federal level. And that is a double barrel shotgun and a five round pump action shotgun. The other two firearms that they have on there were actually exempted in the 1994 assault weapons ban, and that is the Tech 9. It's it's not a specifically a Tech 9. It's the Tech DC 9, right? So the original Tech 9 was banned by the assault weapons ban, and the Tech DC 9 was not for reasons that I'm not going to go into. But it did have the capacity to take a 32 round magazine. Obviously that would probably fit the bill of any assault weapons ban today. The other thing was a high point carbine, which comes with a standard 10 round magazine, as you can see right here. So we're going to go on the assumption that it has a 10 round magazine. And that was this guy right here. Now, if we take a look at the police report here, we can see how many times each of these firearms was fired. The pump action shotgun, again, five round capacity, was fired 25 times. That means that if it started out with five rounds already in there, that firearm was reloaded at least four times, depending on whether you know he let it get completely empty before he reloaded every time. And take a look at this thing. That's not a magazine fed firearm. You have to load each individual round one by one. He did that at least four times. The double barrel shotgun, well, that was fired 12 times. That means that if it started out with rounds in both chambers, he would have had to have reloaded at least five times. And again, that's a manual process. There's no magazine here. You have to take the two rounds out and stick the two rounds in and then close the firearm back up. That's five reloads right there. This carbine right here, assuming the 10 round magazine, at least nine reloads because it was fired 96 times. So reloaded at least nine times. 
Now the Tech DC9, if we assume a 32 round magazine, now there were smaller magazines made for this, and I don't know exactly which magazine he used. It could have been the 10 round, it could have been the 20 round, it could have been the 32, okay, but the 32 is kind of the standard for the Tech 9s and the DC 9s, and if he's using that 32 round magazine, he had to have at least reloaded once. So that's between the two of them, over the course of the shooting, 19 reloads during Columbine, 19. Let's move on to Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, 17 reloads. And we'll, I'll, I'll show you how I get that information in just a second. First, we're going to take a look at this is the uh, after action review. You can find that on the CCRI.edu campus police PDFs after action review by Archangel Group. Let's see if I can find that page again. I think that was 56. Okay, scrolling, scrolling, 56. Here we are. People who were there said, quote, he was accomplishing high-speed tactical reloads of his weapons in scant seconds, with some reporting that it only took him two seconds to change magazines. Two seconds. Now, he carried with him a pair of handguns. A lot of people know this by now. Some people don't. One of them was a Glock 9mm with a 15-round magazine, and he brought several 15-round magazines. The other one was a Walther P-22. If you're not familiar with that, that's a 22 caliber pistol. Okay, that is almost the smallest round you can get in a handgun or a rifle. Everybody knows how tiny a 22 is. Okay, and that was a 10 round magazine. Now, let's take a look at how many reloads. 17 empty or partially empty magazines were found inside Norris Hall. Now, this isn't even counting the other building where he killed two people and then walked out of the building, across campus to another building, chained the doors, and then started shooting other people almost an hour after. So 17 empty magazines or partially empty magazines comprised of eight 9mm magazines and nine 22 caliber magazines. 17 reloads. Now you can dig through this report a little bit more and you'll find out that there were four people, unarmed people, in that building that tried to stop him. One of them tried to hold a door and, and barricade the classroom so his students could get out. One of them was an Air Force ROTC student. He tried to tackle him and got shot mid-tackle. Like the way that he fell on the ground, he was obviously mid-tackle when he got shot. There were two professors who came from another floor to try to help people. They knew that there was a shooting going on. They went towards the shooting. So don't even give me that crap that if we let people carry in schools like teachers or staff or, or parents or whatever, that they just freeze up under pressure. Because every single one of the shootings that I'm going to, to outline here, I could do another entire video of the heroes, the absolute heroes, who unarmed went after the shooter or put their life at risk or in danger or literally knowingly sacrificed their lives to save their students under pressure. You can't tell me that people wouldn't be able to shoot back. But that, that's for another day. Obviously, the 17 reloads here didn't help those four people at Virginia Tech stop this shooter. Okay, I want to point out this other piece that is in the Virginia Tech Review Panel official report to the governor. Page 74. This is a direct quote. The panel also considered whether the previous Federal Assault Weapons Act of 1994 that banned 15 round magazines would have made a difference in the April 16th incidents. The law lapsed after 10 years in October 2004 and had banned clips or magazines with over 10 rounds. And yes, there is a difference between clips and magazines. We're not going to talk about that. The panel concluded that 10-round magazines that were legal would have not made much difference in the incident. And obviously, we can see that because one of the handguns that he used did just have 10-round magazines. Okay, so let's move on to the Batman movie theater shooting, the Century 16 shooting. This guy walked into a movie theater with four firearms, two handguns, a shotgun, and an AR-15 style firearm. Now, the rifle had a 100-round drum magazine. It jammed because 100 round drum magazines suck. It jammed. Did that stop him? Did that give anybody a chance to fight back unarmed? No, because he just switched weapons. You'd be surprised how many of these mass shooters brought more than one gun. Almost all of them, in fact, brought more than one gun. So it's not gonna help you there. Moving on to Sandy Hook. Now this one, this one is the hardest one that, that I had to, to research. Um, well, now there are two hardest ones since Uvalde happened, but the information here, I'm going to tell you exactly where to find it. 
if you want to read the whole report, if, if you have a real legitimate reason to know everything, then fine. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so let's let's talk about this now. CSP Sandy Hook Report .ct.gov has the official police reports, and it comes in three different reports. There are several media attachments that you can download directly. They're not contained in the PDF reports, so you have to download them separately. Um, there's video, crime scene processing video, photographs, things like that. A lot of it is redacted, and I honestly thank God. The main report... The one that contains most of the information here is going to be this first one, CFS 12007045599. It is a 720 megabyte download with nine books, 740 PDFs. It's just gigantic. Let me switch over to that real quick, and we'll talk about what is on page A118 of PDF 00263454 in book one. It's the, it's the very last file in book one. Page A118, which ends up being uh, page 170 of the PDF, as you can see up here, it lists how many magazines were found in the various areas around the school, and how many casings were around, and how many live rounds were in each. I'm going to skip to the math here, and just do a real quick overview, because I don't want to spend too much time, people's eyes will glaze over. Hallway, one magazine, 11 rounds. Room 10, two empty magazines taped together. Room 8, three mags with 0, 10, and 13 rounds in them each. 154 spent casings. All of those mags were 30 round P mags. 154 divided by 30 is 5.6. That means the shooter reloaded at least, at least, five times, maybe six, probably six, honestly, because those are the magazines that were not found in the rifle. There was a magazine in the rifle. These are in addition to that, so I'm going to say six reloads right there. So that's Sandy Hook. He reloaded six times. Did anybody stop him? No? Yeah, didn't think so. Let's move on to Parkland. Now, there are tons of reports on Parkland, and I've read most of all of them, and they are all very long. This gets straight to it. This is a news story, CBS News, not exactly known as the pro-gun bastion of media. Sheriff Gualtieri, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, had to watch the video of everything that happened at Parkland, at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Quote, he said it gnaws at him that suspect douche nozzle anus canoe, I'm not going to say his name because he's a piece of crap and he doesn't deserve to be glorified or immortalized, stopped firing five times to reload. Five times! Okay, I don't even have to do the math on that one. I don't have to look for how many magazines were found where or how many casings. It's on the video. Five times he reloaded at Parkland. Did anybody stop him? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. And you know what? Two people tried, at least. Two people ran into that building unarmed and tried to stop him. One of them had to run across a hallway, but obviously gun beats fists when you're on the opposite end of the hallway. And, and then another one got a hold of him in the, in the stairwell. You'd have to read Why Meadow Died, which is a book by one of the parents of one of the victims at Parkland, to get this. The coroner basically said that the, the powder burn marks on that particular teacher's hands were consistent with him having grabbed the rifle as it went off. He didn't. He wasn't reloading at that point, obviously, but he he did reload five times. And an, and another teacher stood outside in the hallway, knowing full well he was going to die, to try to lock the door from the outside. Again, don't tell me these people could not have fought back; that they would have just frozen up. I call BS. But again, that could be a whole other video. These are all cases that are in the United States. Now, we could look at plenty of other cases outside of the United States. We could look at the Dunblane Massacre in the UK, where the, the shooter brought four handguns. Two of them were semi-autos, two of them were revolvers. And he reloaded, I don't even remember how many times I figured that out to be. We could talk about a bunch of other shootings. But let's just look at one, because, you know, I don't feel like doing this all day. I, I kind of already have. 20 people killed in a school shooting at Crimea Polytechnic College in Crimea, which is technically Russia now. Let's look at the laws here. I'll, I'll give you kind of a summary. In order to get a gun, you have to be 18 or older. You have to have a license to purchase it. You apply for that license, and the local police department will provide you with that license or not provide you with that license, and it's good for five years. First, there's a background check. 
Second, there is a review of your capacity to safely store the firearm according to their safe storage laws. Then, there is a look into your medical records. Anybody who is mentally ill or treated for substance abuse, banned. Can't have it. You can't carry them outside the home unless you're carrying them to wherever you're going to go hunting or sport shooting. And really, that's not carrying it. It's transporting it. Magazines over 10 rounds, banned. Not allowed. There are none. Let's see how that worked out here. 20 people. 20 people shot. 20 people killed, actually. A lot more people than that shot. But let's just say 20. Let's pretend for a second that he only shot 20 people and that each person he shot was just one round. What did he use? A Hatson Escort pump-action shotgun. Pump-action here, not semi-auto. Every time you pull the trigger, it goes bang. You gotta let go of the trigger. You gotta pump the action again before you can pull the trigger again. So not even our, you know, evil, fully semi-auto ghost guns with 30 rounds in less than half a second or whatever that guy in California liked to say, which is obviously beyond the laws of physics. Oh, huh. Well, that only, uh, the longer one only holds seven rounds. Uh, the shorter one holds five rounds. I'm not sure which one he had. You can see that it's obviously this one from the pictures. But look, well, that's less than 10 rounds, isn't it? New York Safe Act? Assault weapons ban? 10 round magazines? Well, this would even comply with the seven round magazine that the New York Safe Act originally had, wouldn't it? He killed 20 people. If it was the seven round model, he would have had to reload at least twice. And again, this is not magazine fed. That's one round at a time. Turn the firearm upside down, rack the action back, slide in one round, slide in another 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 round. Was that six or seven? I don't remember. I lost count, but you get the idea. If it was the five round, he would have reloaded minimum three times. Minimum three times. Because again, that's assuming that he lets the thing go completely empty before turning it over and loading some more rounds in. Nobody's talking about these. Nobody's looking at these reports. Nobody's saying, how many times, how many times did this mass shooter reload? How many times did this mass shooter reload? How many times do they reload on average? So far, if you, if you count this one and you go with the absolute minimum number of rounds shot being one per person, which I can pretty much guarantee it wasn't, that the, the number of reloads is the minimum two. And then you got five, and then you got six, and then you got 17, and then you got 19. So, magazine bans? I don't think they're gonna help. They certainly didn't in these cases. Now, there's another aspect to talk about, and this one we won't spend a whole lot of time on. We're basically done with this video. Mass shootings don't always have just one shooter. So even if we were to say that having to stop and reload would give somebody an opening, how many times is it not going to be... In fact, I just remembered another case that I'm not including here. Okay, it was a, a case at Walmart. This boyfriend-girlfriend couple or husband-wife, I think they were boyfriend-girlfriend, at least shacking up, killed some police officers, two police officers in a, a subway and then went and shot up a Walmart. That was two. Two shooters there. And I totally forgot to put that in my in my uh, video map here. Columbine again. We got two. And then we've got the San Bernardino attack in California where, you know, again, like Russia, insanely heavy gun control and yet still happened. Two shooters in San Bernardino. Husband and wife team. Now, there was another one around the same time in Garland, Texas. Well, that didn't become a mass shooting because, you know, Texans, we tend to shoot back. It was an armed guard that took these guys down. Not even police. An armed guard. He got shot in the ankle. He killed them both. I think we win. But that was two. That was two people. The, the elementary school in Uvalde was not the only thing that happened in Uvalde, believe it or not. Two Uvalde middle school students were arrested in 2018 for conspiracy to commit murder, with police saying the 13 and 14-year-old were plotting what was described as a mass casualty event against the school. That would have been two people if the, if the police hadn't intervened. So that's five now. I only had four on my show map, but that's five. That's five right there. And there are others, obviously. We could talk about France. We could talk about the, the several shootings that happened there that were multiple people. 
And we could talk about another shooting that happened in Russia before the one that I outlined here. That was a bunch of separatists. That was multiple people. We could talk about the one in Africa. I can't remember which country it was. That was several people. So mass shootings don't have to happen with just one person. Obviously, if it's more than one person, your magazine ban is going to be less effective than completely ineffective as it already seems to be. That's basically it. That's information that I've never seen talked about anywhere. How many times did the mass shooters in all of these highly publicized mass shootings have to stop and reload? A lot, as it turns out. 17 in Virginia Tech. 19 at, at Columbine, at least. 6 in, in Newtown at Sandy Hook. 5 at Parkland. Magazine bans, they don't seem like they're going to do anything for you. All right, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to me rant for however long this has been. Keep reading, keep being educated, and uh, I'll see you next time.